Okay, I'm going to shoot a quick little video uh, demonstrating uh, how I am uh, bypassing uh, Wi-Fi tether throttling restrictions on my phone line. Now, I'm, I'm going to be vague at times intentionally for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one, I don't want this to come back and I don't want this to backfire on me. And secondly, I don't understand it. Um, but I do know enough information and can share that information here to help folks maybe get the speeds that they should be getting. So long story short, you can, you can probably piece together the complete story here by understanding some of these details, but I'm gonna be vague. So long story short, um, <clears throat> a certain phone carrier um, is allowing me to have a, um, a phone line for a good price um, and it was supposed to be uh, unlimited data for tethering. Unlimited data on the phone and unlimited data for the tethering and I will <laughs> to tell you that that while that is true um, you need to read between the lines because um, it is throttled it is throttled through the uh, hotspot so um, basically it's it's almost pointless to even have it is about five to six hundred kilobits per second on the upload and I don't remember the up the, I'm sorry, on the download, I don't remember the upload, but it's, you know, with it, the download's the main thing here. I mean, I know we need to have a good upload, but that download is so tiny. Um, gosh, I had better internet speeds 15 years ago. So anyways, I'm not excited about those speeds. Um, I was told that, <clears throat> that there was a misunderstanding, it was a mistake, that the, the throttling um, will go away, it's gonna get fixed, and of course it never did. So anyways, I'm going to show you that there, there are two ways to get around this. Um, or I'm sorry, there are two ways that I know of that will help you get around this. So as you can see, here's an application. This is called Wi-Fi Tether Router. This does require uh, root access. A lot of folks will not have root access. Um, it seems like the longer Android is out, it seems like the less likely we are to find root it seems now that's that's a pretty generic statement for me it's probably not something I should say <clears throat> it just seems like all the phones I used to have that were Android like eight nine ten years ago um, were pretty rootable <clears throat> I don't know anyways the reason why I'm saying this is that it takes two steps to get around this um, tether throttling situation the built-in tethering app functions but is throttled so you root the device and then add the application or something similar that I've just pointed out the Wi-Fi tether app in my case and I will also share with you that <clears throat> I actually paid for that software a long time ago it's like three bucks three dollars for that software that software loves to phone home and check for updates. And it will update, and you, you have no choice. You just got to accept the update. And what they'll, what they'll do is they'll, he will disable the application after so many attempts of it trying to update. Eventually, it will just stop functioning. And then the only solution is to update it. And then that update will sometimes break it. Well, it will sometimes break the application's ability to do its job. So what did I do? I uninstalled it, and then I found a patched version. And by patched, I mean pirated. I, I, I don't feel bad. I paid for the software. Um, I paid my $3 years ago. And I, I cannot stand updates, um, generally speaking, but that's another topic. So, so anyways... <clears throat> So we have um, the built-in tethering app that is throttled. And then we have the 
um, aftermarket root only tethering app that gets meets some other criteria for being unthrottled. Now I can't say what the differences are between the two. I can tell you that the uh, <clears throat> the built-in app runs well. It's efficient. It fires right up. It doesn't chew through the battery. At least not as much as the root, the rootable tether app that I'm talking about, Wi-Fi Tether. It chews through your battery very quickly. It is slow to start. It is also slow to stop meaning slow to turn on the hotspot and slow to turn off the hotspot. And <clears throat> anyways, um, the Wi-Fi tether app also requires root. I think I've said that before. That's important to know here. So um, I have various phones around the house. Um, I can have a T-Mobile version, a Verizon version, maybe an AT&T version. Um, I can have all these different versions of the same phone, and the, the AT&T one, the AT&T version will not be rootable. So that's another topic as well. We're going to come back to this topic, and that is bypassing the throttling on Tether. So the other part of the thing. Um, the other part of the equation we need to speak to is how some of these carriers can determine the source of a packet. They're using something called time to live. I won't pretend to be a master of how the time to live works, but basically um, if a packet originates from this Windows PC it will say, I think it starts with a TTL value of, say, 125. Don't quote me on that. And, but I think it's 125. And then when it hits the router, it's now 124. And then the router passes it to the modem, which a lot of us have gateways with routers, modems, etc. all built in. And it hits the next spot, it's 123. And then it hits the cell phone tower or it hits the, the node for the ISP, that's 122. And then it hits such and such, and that's 122. And 121, and so on and so forth. And the reason for this, this is a mechanism to keep lost packets, or uh, packets that are that have not reached their destination. It basically gives the network, or the internet, the wide area network, an ability to say, ah, these packets are old. These packets are from 20 minutes ago, and they're not going anywhere, we need to kill them. So they kill off the packets, they delete those packets. Once we reach, once the TTL value reaches zero. <clears throat> okay, that's the point of TTL. Time to live. It's how many hops until this packet is killed. So for whatever reason, my Windows 10 machines, I think are 125. Don't quote me on that, like I said, I want a TTL value of 125. Android is, I think it's 64. So anyways, what we need to do is we need to edit the TTL value of this Windows machine to be 65. So that when it hits the Wi-Fi Tether app, it is now 64. And then the packet is sent through the phone, through the network, and the network sees that value and says, ah, that's a good packet. That packet originated from that phone based on TTL values. So it's as simple as that. So how do we edit the TTL values? Well, this is the thing that is not, this is what made me think that I should document this because this is not common knowledge. So basically what we do is we go to regedit, we type in, um, we hit uh, start. I'm not sure how well this camera is going to go. This is an old camera. And we type in R-E-G-E-D-I-T. Enter. <clears throat> and you'll see that it remembered the last place I went. 
This is um, low production. This is going to be a low production video like all of my videos. So anyways, here is the path. Um, you just want to click down through these until you get to H key. Basically here, I'll just read it to you. H key local machine backslash system backslash slash uh, current control set set. Well, I can't talk backslash um, services backslash TCP IP backslash parameters. Okay. So when you first start out, you're going to have a list like, so you're just going to click on it, click on the next one, click on the next one, click on the next one, so on and so forth. And then you're going to end up in this box right here, this field. Okay. This is the parameters field. In this box, you're going to create this default TTL, uh, TTO. Okay. How do you create that? I'll just do it right here, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to duplicate what I've already done. I'm going to slightly modify it. So I'm going to do uh, right click new. We're going to do D word 32 bit value. Okay. It's going to ask us for a name. I'm going to call this and you'll want to do this correctly. I do not know if it is case sensitive, but I can tell you that doing what I did works. So we're going to do default with a capital D, no space, capital T, capital T, L. Now you're going to want to not type this last number. I'm going to type in two because this is a copy for in my case, because I've already got it done. My original mine is up here. All right, now you're going to double click on this and choose which value you're going to give this. And if you're going to use hexadecimal, I think it is 40. You know what? Never mind. Don't do hexadecimal, do decimal, and then just type in 65. And then hit OK. There you are. And now you'll need to reboot. And that should take care of it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete what I've just created. We're going to... Um, I'm going to take a look at the original one that I have here. Yeah, hexadecimal would be 41. Decimal would be 65. It doesn't matter which one you use because they mean the same thing. It's just a number, a different numbering system that computers use. So anyways, you will need to reboot. And then you will be able to do good. You'll be, you'll be unthrottled, basically. And I could show you, um, if we were to look... <clears throat> this window right here you can see i'm downloading unthrottled um, um i'm delivering i'm downloading a gears gears of war game uh something i forget what gears of war 4 something like that so there's there's um there's our chart um x and y uh, data over time and as you can see, we're frequently anywhere from 10 to 15 megabits per second as an average. And that's, um, that's not throttled. Uh, throttled would be 500 to 600 kilobits. So this, this is pretty significant. And again, I don't know why, but the built-in tethering app on that phone... <clears throat> won't work alone with this you got you have to use the aftermarket root app and i don't know why i don't know the difference and android seems to be incredibly fragmented so good luck re good luck researching this um other bits of information i can add to this i can't edit ttl values on xboxes or playstations so they're throttled so um, downloading updates and games and stuff takes forever. I mean, 
if I've got a big update or a big game that I want to play, which that's not really been the case in quite some time now, I'll actually unplug my Xbox and take it to work or take it to a friend's house and use their inter internet. I've, I know someone who has a 200 megabit connection and I can knock some stuff out pretty quick. So um, the only other thing I can really add to the conversation is that throttled connection from that um, ISP phone service that I will not mention by name. They will allow for that throttled um, throughput to increase up to about 1.2 or 1.3 megabits as long as it's video, which does not make any sense. As long as it's for screwing around, watching Hulu, Netflix, YouTube, they're like, eh, we'll let you have t twice, twice, almost three times the speed. But if you're actually trying to, you know, get some work done, uh, -uh no, no, thank you. You need you five to six hundred um, kilobits is all you get. So. Anyways, um, I guess that is all I have for this video, and I know that I was vague, and I'm not even sure how to title this, um, but it's this has not been documented anywhere that I can see. It probably is. I'm probably just looked for the wrong information. As I said, I don't even know what to call this, but I suppose I would call this how to bypass cellular companies throttling mechanisms and the, the shame of it is is that TTL thing they probably think they're being clever but that was not why TTL was created it was to kill packets that's been hopping indefinitely back and forth between networks it, it wasn't meant to be used as seeing where a packet originated on what kind of device so I don't know does doesn't seem right to me, but whatever. It also doesn't seem right that they're throttling to begin with. But that's, that's all I got for now.